Welcome to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. This episode, we are talking about breastfeeding for all in St. Louis. And I have a couple of women who have uh, thought quite a lot about breastfeeding. I have Erin O'Reilly with the St. Louis Breastfeeding Coalition and with La Leche League. And I have uh, Denisha Billups, who is with I Am Breastfeeding and Women, Infants, and Children. And the third group is the Wellness... Community Birth and Wellness Center. Community Birth and Wellness Center. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, Erin, tell us a little bit about La Leche League. Is, uh, isn't that the oldest of the breastfeeding support organizations? Yes, um, La Leche League is 60 years old this wow. October. Um, and so um, we have been considered the world authority for breastfeeding. Mm. It's been was started in 1956 by seven women who, when the breastfeeding rates were about 15 percent only in the United States, mm. and now breastfeeding rates are up above 80 percent nationally. At mm. least initiation rates are, and so that's a huge improvement. And a lot of that is due to La Leche League's work over the 50, 60 years now, mm -hmm. and. Um, La Leche League was also the organization that started the IBCLC um, program, mm -hmm. or profession, I mean. And I'm an IBCLC certified um, lactation consultant, we call ourselves. Okay. And um, so it was a La Leche League leader who saw the need for um, that healthcare worker to be in the okay. hospitals and in the healthcare system to help moms get started with so, breastfeeding. So am I uh, correct that La Leche League does more work directly with mothers who are breastfeeding and the St. Louis Breastfeeding Coalition does a lot of work with healthcare workers? Well, St. Louis Breastfeeding Coalition, yes, works with the community at large. It's a, um, it's a advocacy group, so to promote resources for breastfeeding mm -hmm. moms and babies in the metro St. Louis area. Also to train, to get more training in, um, for healthcare workers, mm -hmm. to advocate for more service pe people in the service of serving breastfeeding moms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we got a grant for the I Am Breastfeeding Group mm -hmm. um, to be started mm -hmm. in Ferguson, Missouri because there was a lack of services in North St. Louis mm -hmm. for breastfeeding so it moms. So it helps with services. Yeah, it's an advocacy. So it's not in the actual clinical care or hands-on okay. care. La Leche League's in the hands-on care. We call it mother-to-mother -mother support. Okay. And, um, and then, of course, I, lactation consultants. Most of us work in the hospital, but I work in WIC, and so I work in the community. But mm -hmm. I have a background in public health nursing, and that's much more where I like to be in okay. the community. Okay, fantastic. Okay, Denisha, mm -hmm. what is I Am Breastfeeding? So I Am Breastfeeding is an organization that goes in home. We go into the hospital. We support moms with breastfeeding um, a lot, and we support underserved moms and women of color, you'd be surprised to know how, how much difference it is between a woman of color and a woman that's not of color, the mm -hmm. difference of the, the care that they get when they want to breastfeed. So, um, well, What's the difference? I, <laughs> well, so if you have a black woman in a, um, a hospital, she says she wants to breastfeed, a lot of the response that I get is they say, oh, well, okay, good. <laughs> that's it. And, and that's try it. go ahead and that's great and then yeah. with a white woman that may want to breastfeed it's more wow this is great let me show you what you need to do the lactation okay. consultant uh. may be able to help you okay. so where we come in is if you don't feel like you have that support at the hospital I can mm. come to the hospital I can help you I can help you um, latch mm. I'm a CLC as well um, along with Erin and we did get the grant with um, St. Louis Breastfeeding Coalition um, so now I'm a CLC, so I'm able to help those moms who don't feel like they get the support that they need. So that's what I Am Breastfeeding is about. So do, do y'all ever poke at the hospitals a little bit to, 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 get, them, we always to get a little, do. Bit, more, more, a little <laughs> bit more support and be we aware of the, of the differential treatment? We do. You know, we okay. have uh, created a um, partnership with St. Mary's Hospital oh, where they know, they acknowledge it, and it's not all the time that they just don't want to help. Sometimes they're just understaffed. This okay. is the, the lactation um, people that work there. Sometimes they're understaffed and sometimes they just, um, the people don't relate. Yeah. Okay. A black woman, a young black woman in her 20s and a, la a lactation specialist that's 50 years old and white, mm. they have nothing 
to kind of cross, and okay. so it's not. It's not there. Yeah. So tra training uh, more black people to become nurses and lactation specialists would something. Lactation yeah. specialists would, would be, be the really, okay. And, and that's something we've worked at doing with the um, coalition also. We have what we call a lactation professional fund because it's very expensive to become certified. And so um, a lot of women who don't have good incomes, they can't find the money to do that. And so okay. we started this fund. It's still pretty small. We are trying to grow the fund. And so we can help out with you know some of the expenses to send them to the seminars that they need to go to to get the CEUs, and also to sit for the exam, which is very expensive to do that. So definitely, our goal is to get more women in um, of color and women in places where there's not enough people certified to. Well, you know, maybe a get little training. bit of Medicare for all and reimbursement for. Medical training would be would be a little bit of help. <laughs> yeah, it would be it would be helpful because you know like the federal government has sent a lot of money down when doctors were in short staff like um, the the primary care physicians, federal dollars came on down to help them get trained and encourage them, and so we'd like to see that for the lactation yeah. professions. Yeah, well, well. I think it's a public health issue. It, it certainly it certainly is. Um, now what what is the uh, I want to get back to the other groups that you work with, but as long as you bring up the public health issue, what are the health benefits for mothers and for infants if, if you're um, breastfeeding over uh, being fed formula? Mm. Many, many, many. <laughs> okay. it's, it's good for the baby, of course. Everybody knows that. I really don't, oh, need I don't to know that. I don't know that everybody does know that. I think well, there's a lot of people who don't. There are a, a lot less illness. Um, you know, all babies get ill, but breastfed babies get ill less, like half as often. Mm. And when they get ill, they get ill. It's shorter and less serious, you know. Mm. And then when they grow up, it, we're doing okay with the short-term illnesses in this country. Mm. But what we aren't doing okay with is handling diabetes mm -hmm. now. And um, a formula-fed baby is 40% more likely to get diabetes when they grow up. And so that's did, huge. Did Heart they put a bunch of sugar in the formula or something? The first ding, 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 ingredient ding. is <laughs> corn syrup <laughs> in formulas. A corn first, syrup. The first ingredient before milk products is corn syrup. Oh, well that, that explains it right there. It does. <laughs> that, 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 that the corn syrup, because that's... The, 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 then the child is addicted to sweets. We were just talking and, about this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that's, okay, well, that's one. Well, you know, and it would, not all women can breastfeed. It would be nice if we had milk banks. You know, Brazil has over 200 milk banks in mm -hmm. Brazil, and we have only 22 in the United that's, States. That's pretty small. And, and Brazil is a smaller population. Right. And mm -hmm. if we had more milk banks so that moms who had plenty of milk, could send it, it's like a blood bank, but it mm -hmm. processes the milk, and then a mother could get, uh, who couldn't breastfeed, or maybe she wasn't, she didn't have enough milk, mm -hmm. then she could, wouldn't have to use formula. She right. could use human milk for her baby. Okay, D Denisha, now uh, tell me, you also work with women, infants, and children. I do. Now, I've heard of that organization before, but I really don't know what, it, I've forgotten what it does, and I'm sure a lot of viewers have also. Tell me tell me a little bit about it. So WIC, uh, as a lot of people know, we provide a, a food care package, healthy mm. eating. So we provide vouchers for moms um, mm. and babies um, so that you can go to the grocery store and just uh, supplement what you may not be able to afford mm. or what some people may not be able to afford. We also support women with breastfeeding. We also, if you're fully breastfeeding, can supply you with a breast pump. Um, oh, we also... Um, so that would be extremely helpful if a woman has to work, to work or if she wants to have a nightlife and go out. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. I think that's the problem. Sometimes a lot of people think that they... I can't drink, I can't go out, I can't do anything because I have to nurse my baby. Well, right. that's where we come in to, to help you with those situations. Right. Um, so yes, so that's um, what we do. And we provide nutrition counsel counseling. So we have new, what a nutritionist mm -hmm. and dietitian. Dietitian. They're yeah. there and they counsel the women about healthy eating, um, different recipes and um, what and, type of milks? Yeah, so and what, if they want to lose weight, okay. uh, they get really good nutritional counseling in, in WIC. Yeah, That's yeah. like food for the lifetime, whereas the food package is actually like the for the meal, you know, but mm -hmm. it's like, you know, this parable, um, so, give so a fish, it, that's it, a I'm, meal, but teach I'm, them how to fish and that's a meal for Would it be correct to say that women, infant, children, breastfeeding is part of what the overall program is and not 
unlike the other organizations that really focus on breastfeeding. Right. So I think women, infant, and children, WIC is getting back to um, helping the community. They, they noticed that it's a public health issue with all the children that are on formula. I, f I truly believe that they pushed the formula so much, now it's them backtracking and trying to correct the problem that they started. Mm -hmm. So they put a big push on trying to influence and encourage moms to breastfeed. Good. Um, yeah. So it's becoming a forefront, but we still provide moms who don't want to breastfeed with mm -hmm. the formula. Fantastic. Okay. Um, now tell me, if, what about the Community of Birth and Wellness Center? What, so that's, I'm very excited to talk about that. The Community Birth and Wellness Center is a new birthing center in Ferguson, Missouri. It was okay. started by two black women and it's ran by black women. And it's for black women, but we accept everyone. But right. it's just somewhere There's in our... There's a particular need in yes, Ferguson. Yes, it's in it's our a, community. Yeah. It's around yeah. our neighborhoods and it's women that we know. We live in Ferguson. We walk the streets. Mm. We know the street names. So um, we provide women mm. with prenatal care. Mm -hmm. We have midwives there. We also rent out the space if people need to, if they have mommy and me classes mm -hmm. or if they have yoga for the community. So it's um, kind of like a hub. We do what we need to do with the prenatal moms, but mm -hmm. we also have the space available for the community and if they want to, to enrich the community more with well, what they that's have. That's great. So, so it, it sounds, if I can summarize what you're saying, is that there are organizations that specifically focus on breastfeeding in different ways and then there's organizations that work look at health uh, of children globally and then the breastfeeding groups plug into that and then there's specific needs of uh, the black community especially in Ferguson and so there's basically there's a lot of support networks out there mm -hmm. okay we're going to take a break and uh, look at a uh, couple of announcements and we will be back in just a minute Welcome back to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. We're talking about breastfeeding for all in St. Louis. And with me, I have a couple of women who have put a lot of effort into supporting breastfeeding. I have uh, De uh, Denisha Billups, who is uh, with uh, I Am Breastfeeding, and also with Women, Infants, and Children, and also the um, uh, Community Birth and Wellness Center. I got those right. You did. With my note, with help of my notes. Okay. <laughs> and Erin uh, O'Reilly is with the St. Louis Breastfeeding Coalition and with La Leche League. Mm -hmm. Okay, now tell me, uh, what are some of the resources for breastfeeding mothers in St. Louis? Well, I'd like to um, start off by saying that the um, St. Louis Breastfeeding Coalition has an excellent website that one of our members put together. Okay. And on it, we have a resource tab, and we have mapped out all the current resources. So is that, that, that would be to say if someone is interested in breastfeeding, yes, they she does it, and she feels like she really needs support to do it. Right. Um, maybe her mother didn't breastfeed, or her mother isn't in St. Louis. And, right. and, and so th that, that would be a good place to yeah, start. Yeah, any to get... um, ho hospitals that have programs, it would be any WIC sites, it also okay. would be any stores that have in house lactation programs or sell products, and okay. also La all the La Leche League groups and the I Am Breastfeeding um, group is on there. And by you the way, I want to say <laughs> um, congratulations. The I Am Breastfeeding now has their own 501c3 oh, status now. Mm -hmm. So that's real exciting. It is very exciting. We um, kind of birthed it in the coalition, but now they've taken off and um, they're going forth. Okay, Denisha, what, what could you add about resources? Um, I would just add that we do have I Am Breastfeeding. We have the Community Birth and Wellness Center. Um, any of your WIC agencies, Kangaroo Kids, I um, adore them. They helped me with my first child when I had no clue of what to do or what was going on. And Erin pretty much mentioned the rest of them that, that I can think of. Yeah, Amber Sky is a new business in Maplewood, and then also Parenting Resources mm -hmm. in right in South St. Louis. Yes. They have um, lactation consultants at both places, and they also sell products and they do classes and stuff there. So that's kind of a neat business model that's really thriving yeah. also. Any other support services or is that? Well, the, all the La La Shilly groups. There's okay. about 14, 15 groups in the Metro St. Louis that meet per month. Uh -huh. um, so, well, or I should say 15 meetings per month in the St. Louis area. And those are listed all on um, the St. Louis Breastfeeding Coalition. And the Saint, the La Leche League has their own website. It's um, La Leche League STL org, and mm -hmm. all the groups are listed there with contact numbers. 
Okay, and, and is this, you mentioned that the La Leche League, this is its 60th year of existence, started in 1956. Uh -huh. So what, what is happening to celebrate that 60th year? Well, um, to start off, and um, we're going to have a big celebration in Chicago because that's close mm. to where it started, and so mm. that's happening at first, and then different areas will be doing different things um, mm -hmm. to celebrate. And of course, it's it's the more the big group, the La Leche League USA and the La Leche League International, because the La Leche League is in seventy different countries now. Oh wow, and that's, so, that's amazing. Of course, there's mm -hmm. going to be you know um, on the website a lot of activities and asking for donations um, and everything for. La Leche League. La Leche League, we are all volunteers and so we and we get memberships but most people do not pay for memberships to come to meetings. You don't have to be a member to come to meetings and so we are operating all on a shoestring budget and um, it's kind of sad already out of the seven founders five of them have passed away and they've done this thing that is you know well, had a ripple. After 60 years that's not <laughs> right, no, no, a ripple too, effect, uh -huh. and it's helped thousands and millions, you know, pro worldwide of uh -huh. mothers and babies be successful with breastfeeding, and yet nobody has recognized La Leche League with a major award, like they should have won a Nobel Peace Prize, mm, Right. Mm -hmm. they should have won an, a presidential award, and here only two of them are still alive, so mm. now's the time. <laughs> You know, okay. to get some awards. De De Denisha, tell me, is there anything that you can add about what WIC is doing in, in terms um, of working with other groups or working with the community? So WIC, well, my goal as a WIC uh, breastfeeding and peer counselor is to work more with the community. So what I am doing is just reaching out to moms, calling moms. Uh -huh. Everywhere I go, I, I give them a card. Um, so you can stop by your WIC office. I'm there from 8 to 5, so mm -hmm. you can speak to me. Um, and that's pretty much what we're doing. We might be reaching out to um, a couple of different other insurance agencies just to see how we can help in that way to the okay. to their pregnant moms. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's you know. Um, so so that one one to one is really important. Really, yeah, yeah, really important. Because you know, you know, I mean, the web is good for people who don't have that one to one contact, but to know that some somebody's going through the same issue that you, somebody has gone through the same issues that you might have and concerns you might have, then they can, just knowing that means you can talk about them. Exactly, and also it's a good point, you said one-to-one -one is important, but what's really important and what I find working in the, the underserved and the women of color community is uh, support groups. Yes. Where, like you said, you know that somebody else is going through this and you don't have to just kind of sit back and endure this pain by yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just speaking the problem Mm -hmm. helps you feel better. So mm -hmm. with a lot of the moms there, there's just something to be able to say, well, yeah, my baby didn't latch for the first two weeks either. And the other mom was like, oh my God, I'm so happy that you said that. Mm -hmm. I don't feel alone in this world of okay. breastfeeding. Yeah. So yes, one-on-one um, -on -one is very important and the, the group support is, is, is very, very important too. Uh, and, I wanted to say, I also work for WIC um, mm -hmm. as well. and. Um, Wick, Missouri WIC is doing a lot. I want to compliment our leader, who happens to be Kathy Mertzliff in Jeff City, uh -huh. and she has really done a lot. Missouri's doing quite well in terms of breastfeeding promotion. We have, in most all of the WIC, well, all of the ones in St. Louis, we have um, a breastfeeding team. You, you know, a mm -hmm. CLC, a peer counselors, or IBCLC working in the WIC offices. Um, other states don't have that coverage like Missouri does. Mm. And um, our breastfeeding rates have gone up. Um, are you interested in hearing yeah, about breastfeeding absolutely, rates? Absolutely. <laughs> so so you, you said that nationally it was 15% when... Uh, in the La 1950s. 56 yeah. when La Leche League started. And now it's 80% at least try breastfeeding for a few weeks. Well, it's 81.1 .1 to be exact, as okay. of 2016 numbers just came mm. up. And um, about, na these are national, 51.8 okay. at six months are still breastfeeding, any breastfeeding, and it goes down to 30.7 at a year. And so, um, although, you know, many women do have the goal of breastfeeding a whole year, two-thirds are not meeting their goals because they aren't getting the support they need. So we have a lot to do to improve and get more of us, what we do, 
um, to help these women. Mm -hmm. And then, but I do want to say that was the national stats. In Missouri, um, it went up from 67.9 last, and the 2014 was the last assessment, okay. to 85.4 initiation. So wow, that's a that's huge good. jump. Mm -hmm. And the six month was um, 42.1 up to 56.6 .6 at six months. And um, at 12 months, it was 20.2. Up so to thirty-six point five. A big drop from six months to twelve months. Yeah, a big drop, mm -hmm. and that's because people are going back to work. Mm -hmm. Even Maybe really, at three eating. months, there's a huge drop off, mm -hmm. oh, okay. and it's because we don't have paid family leave. I firmly believe that's a big part of it because breastfeeding a newborn is a full-time job. It's over mm -hmm. eight hours a day of actual feeding time, and moms are working two jobs, full-time jobs, when they're working outside the home and breastfeeding a baby. Mm -hmm. Every other country has it. Okay. May, all other major countries. We're one of few countries that don't have well, national I, paid. Family. I've heard references to the uh, expected breastfeeding a time period of six months. What, what do you think is a, is a good goal? Is it six months, nine months, a year, well, 18 months, two it's years? It's a lucky months? baby that gets yeah. two years. <laughs> okay, so. Um, the World Health Organization recommends two years, and worldwide, it's, it's longer than that. Um, mm -hmm. Although breastfeeding rates with modernization are going down mm -hmm. um, somewhat, but um, you know, historically breastfed babies would breastfeed maybe four, five years, you know, okay. before there was, ad you know, other foods, baby foods and things like that. But mm -hmm. two years is a good goal to make. Okay, so two years is reasonable and, 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 and small children that are still breastfeeding at three, four or five, that's not unusual not, for the way that not. the cultures have evolved over millions, it's, over thousands The benefits of years. are dose related. Okay. And we were talking about benefits. I do want to say there's lots of benefits for the mom, too. People don't realize how good it is for moms. They burn a lot of calories, and that metabolic boost for a year or two of breastfeeding, day in, day out, because babies eat every day, you know, uh -huh. um, <laughs> that they are burning those calories lowers a mom's risk of. Um, the heart disease, diabetes, um, obesity, high blood pressure, all those things are lowered, and breast cancer. Of okay, we're going to take a break, and uh, we're, we will be back in, again, just a very brief time after a couple of announcements and finish up covering some of the major points of okay. breastfeeding. Welcome back to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. We are talking about breastfeeding for all in St. Louis, and with me I have a couple of people who have put a lot of time and energy into issues related to breastfeeding. I have Erin O'Reilly and I have uh, Denisha Billups. Mm -hmm. uh, so Denisha, what, tell us about what's happening in Ferguson. What, what can a woman who's interested in breastfeeding, where could she meet other people? You, we can meet, uh, we have a support group the fourth mm -hmm. Tuesday of every month at the fourth Ferguson. Tuesday, okay. The fourth Tuesday of every month at the Ferguson Library. We meet from six to 7.30. We have light refreshments, children are welcome, husbands are welcome, grandparents are welcome, anybody who wants to support you in your um, role as a breastfeeding mom, they're welcome to come. And so it sounds like that would be a really good place to meet other women who are who, who live in the same community. Definitely. And, and who live nearby and you could talk to each other. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, what are some of the goals, Erin, of the uh, various breastfeeding groups? Well, the um, St. Louis Breastfeeding Coalition, I just want to say that we meet five times a year. We have a very mm -hmm. active website and a Facebook page. And I Am Breastfeeding also has a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. La Leche League also has a Facebook page as well. Moms can talk through Facebook, even if they can't mm -hmm. attend a meeting, so that's nice to know. Mm -hmm. um, but some of our goals at these meetings, we discuss them would be to get a milk bank in St. Louis because we have St. two Louis. neonatal intensive, actually three neonatal, neonatal intensive care units. One or two so, more goals and that's we're about out of time. Okay, okay. and um, we'd also like to get a breastfeeding resource center where oh, they that would be great. could be research, maybe the milk bank could be attached to that. We could have advocacy there. We could have clinical skills and education okay. going and on. Aaron and Denisha, I want to thank you both very much for sharing your wisdom with us. Thank I want you to for thank having our us. viewers to, for tuning in, and I hope you tune in the same time next week.